welcome to my channel. We're going to value CBRE and look at its financial ratios. CBRE is a commercial real estate services and investment firm. It is the largest commercial real estate services company in the world. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $16.2 billion. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. And let's see what they're trading at. 48.22 per share. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm going to pull their actual free cash flows. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. We also need the net income, that's a profit and loss on the income statement. And next we're going to pull the revenue, which are the sales, also on the income statement. And let's take a quick look at the numbers. So their free cash flow is growing each year, which is a good sign. When you have positive free cash flow, that means you're generating more cash than you're spending. Net income is also positive and it's growing pretty rapidly each year. It more than doubled from 2016 to 2019. And look at their revenue. It doubled from 2016 to 2019. It's hard to double your revenue when it's $13 billion, but they did it. That's pretty impressive growth. Let's look at the capital structure of the company so we can figure out the discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They pay $86 million of interest on their debt. That's on the income statement. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to liability section. Current debt of 983 million. That's debt due within 12 months. Long-term debt of 1.7 billion. That's debt due after 12 months. They pay a little over 3% interest on the debt. Interest payments are tax deductible. So let's go back to the income statement. So let's take the 2018 year because 2019 they paid hardly anything in taxes. 2018 they had 1.4 billion of income and 313 million in taxes. So the effective tax rate is 23%. The cost of debt is 2.4%. Let's get the beta so we can figure out the cost of equity. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a beta of 1.63, so the stock is a little more volatile than the market. Let's go back to the balance sheet, get the current assets. We need this to calculate the current ratio later. That's 7.5 billion. Let's see what that is. 970 million of cash, 4.5 billion of net receivables. That's how much money other companies owe CBRE. And 276 million of other. We also need the current liabilities to calculate the current ratio, that's 6.4 billion. Let's see what that is. Current debt of 983 million, accounts payable of 2.4 billion, that's how much money CBRE owes other companies. 30 million of taxes payable, that's how much they owe the government in taxes. 1.3 billion of accrued liabilities, these are expenses the company has incurred but hasn't paid yet. Payroll and payroll taxes are a common type of accrued liability. Deferred revenue of 108 million. Deferred revenue is when you receive revenue before you deliver the product or service. So you book it onto the balance sheet and the liability section as deferred revenue. But when you deliver the product or service, you pull it off of deferred revenue and onto the income statement as revenue. And they have 122 million of other. Equity of 6.2 billion. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities. That's 3.3 million of common stock, 5.8 billion of retained earnings. Retained earnings is a sum of all your prior net incomes minus the sum of all the dividends you've paid in the past. And accumulated other comprehensive income of negative 680 million. These are unrealized losses the company has not incurred. Unrealized means it hasn't sold the investment yet to realize the loss. We also need the EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. That's 1.3 billion. Let's look at a capital structure. They have 31% debt. Cost of debt is 2.4%. 69% equity. Cost of equity is 14.8%. 
and the WAC is 11%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $15.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $14 billion. We divide that by 336 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $42. They're trading at $48, so they're trading at a 16% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. There are $55, so they're saying the stock is a little undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. Looks like it was doing well until coronavirus, then it dropped. It did come up a bit, but it came back down. So it seems like it could be a good value if you feel the commercial real estate industry is going to be strong in the next few years. Let's look at their financial ratios. They have a good PE, 12.6. The median for the entire market is 15.1, so they're better than the market. 0.7 price of sales, so that's better than the median in the market of 1.8, and the average in the market is 5.4. Good price to book of 2.6, the median is 2.4, and the average is 5.8. The PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 12.6, so investors are paying $12.60 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.7, so investors are paying $0.70 cents for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.6, so investors are paying $2.60 for $1 book value. Current ratio of 1.2, the average is 1.8 and the median is 1.3, so that's good. A good interest coverage ratio of 15.5, the median in the entire market is 4.1 and the average is 13.4. And they have a good ROE of 21%, the median is 13%, the average is 8%. Current ratios, current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2. They're at 1.2. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 21%. So they're providing a good value to the equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 15.5. So they can easily cover their interest payments. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, the only other company I did was Brookfield. And Brookfield has a better PE, much better than CBRE. CBRE does have a better price of sales, but Brookfield has a much better price to book. CBRE has a 1.2 current ratio, which is fine, and Brookfield is 0.3, which is terrible. CBRE has better ROE at 21% compared to 5%. They also have lower debt at 31% compared to 49%. CBRE is bigger at 16 billion market cap compared to Brookfield's 11 billion. So CBRE has much better numbers than Brookfield. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment, I'll definitely answer. If you want to see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.